Howdy y'all, my name's That One Dude, and today I'm here joined with... Next VR, fully fit. Let's get it. <laughs> w. Um, so, basically, I know it's been a while since I've done a podcast episode. I was out of town for most of my time, so there's gonna be definitely more videos coming out. It's just, um, right now I was busy. So, yeah. Um... Uh, let's start off. Uh, Nix, do you what made you start like your YouTube generally? Right. So before I did Recrum YouTube, I did Fortnite YouTube, and that was because I was seeing a bunch of people do it at the time, and it was the main game I played. And then I started playing Rec Room because I had just gotten my PlayStation VR, and I was looking through the uh, free store and looking at free games on the PlayStation because I had a PlayStation VR. Mm. And I saw Rec Room, and I was like, oh, I'll give this game a try. And I really liked it. And after a while, I saw people like Harry Manlegs and Bofaya and Soul Fox and Steel and Tidal Wave. And I saw other Rectubers and that that Rectubing even existed. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that seems fun, you know. Let's go, uh, let's go give that a try. And then I made my first video about me meeting other Rectubers. And I found it really fun to do. So I just kept on going. And that's how I became a Rectuber. Mm, dope. And on the topic of VR, um, can we all talk about that, like, um, PlayStation VR? Because I feel like everybody started on that when playing Rec Room. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people did, yeah. And, I don't like, know, I think it's a... Yeah. No, go on. No, uh, so basically, um, that's how I started. I started playing on my friend's PlayStation VR, and then he showed me Rec Room, and Rec Room, that we played only climbing maps. And Among Us RR, if you oh. don't know what that is, uh, I'll put it up on the screen right yeah, now. Yeah. Go on. You, you're all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like the place of VR is a lot of people starting headset just because it's, you know, PlayStation is a is a brand outside of VR, so a lot of people's parents know it. So when people say, like, oh, mom, I really want a VR, the PlayStation is, like, a well-known, you know, a household name. Yeah. So people instantly, you know, it, it becomes very accessible. And it was pretty cheap for a VR headset at the time oh, yeah. when it came out. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like, when did you get your first actual VR? Not, like, PlayStation VR that's, like, branded because it's PlayStation or, like... The, like Oculus, HTC Vive, all that. Right. When was your first? Well, I played with the PlayStation VR up until I want to say Christmas of twenty twenty one. Um. So on the topic of VR and that, that stuff. Um. How how did you meet? Um. How did you really get into the Rec Room community? Mm -hmm. Right, so when I first started, um, uh, I met Steel. Uh, I don't know if you know Steel on VR. I met him, and I, uh, I I became friends with him, and I started talking to him. But mainly it was, uh, ironically, Everything Rec Room, who was one of the first RecTubers that I met. Mm. And he helped me out in the beginning. He helped me on my like third video, and on my fourth one, he was... He edited my uh, one of my first like my first good video. He edited yeah. it and did the thumbnail, and then he was an actor in the video I did after that, which is my Darth Vader one, which got a lot of views at the time. Mm. Um, and he kind of introduced <laughs> me to uh, Iron Guy because he was going to do a video with me and Iron Guy, and then Iron Guy introduced me to Axe VR, and then I met Lava VR, and then we did the Rectuber Royale. Uh, access back to Bria at the time, and I met like Tech Cat, uh, Ash is Cool, which you also had on the show, Sonic mm -hmm. the Man, uh, all these other Rectubers. So it yeah. was really everything Rec Room was the first Rectuber that I met. And it's just you meet one person, then you meet another one because of him, and then you meet another one, and then just you know, keeps going like that. Yeah, man. Uh, I can tell you that. Um, whenever I started first playing the Rec Room, uh, I believe the first group I've ever played with was i believe uh doom kids group do you know who doom kid is by any chance uh not by name yeah um but he he he, he used to like pop off really good and, and he was actually pretty big for a while and i was just a part of his group mm -hmm. for a little bit but um right that... hmm? no i said i said right yeah uh but i remember my first ever actual group i had was this this guy named um Mr. and Mr. Moon. Those two dudes I started right. the rec room with. 
And then now I'm with the the I'm now I'm with the people Beagle and Ben, Yoshi, Yoshi VR, and you you know the game. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know them. Yeah. Beagle was actually the one who recommended me to go here. So. Yeah, yeah, I I even yeah. showed that up on the Discord that day. I said give him a W. Uh huh. Yeah, I saw you. You sent me a screenshot. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, let's talk about your music career. Uh, what was when did yes. you start making your actual first song? So my first song was uh on top, which was my first rap song. But before that, I'd been doing beats and instrumental, so just music with no like voice on mm-hmm. it, so no vocals, no singing, yeah. rapping, for like half a year at that point. And it was actually I was on vacation. I was in Italy. And I remember I originally wanted to make a diss track on Lava VR because he was a good friend of mine, and I thought it would be funny if we made like a, like a friendly diss track, not mm-hmm. like an actual beef thingy, but like just as jokes. Mm-hmm. And I remember I called him. I said like, "Yo, can I do this diss track on you?" And then he said, "Yeah, sure." So I made the beat, which is the beat to on top. That was originally going to be the beat for my uh, Lava VR diss track. Mm-hmm. And then he called me up the next day, and he said, "No, I don't want you to do it anymore." Dang. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I was like, oh, and then I was like, oh, but I already have this beat. So what do I do now? And then I re- and then I remember that Zigarbo, who at that time was, uh, he had this autotune thing. He had mm-hmm. autotune and he would go into rec centers and he would sing and he would do funny things and w- like rap and singing with singing with the autotune. And I was like, oh, that's uh, that's funny. You know, let me ask him. So I remember I called Zigarbo like, yo, you want to do the song together? And sure. And then I wrote I wrote the lyrics to on top during a dinner with mm-hmm. family. Yeah. In a restaurant. Mm-hmm. I wrote the <laughs> lyrics on my phone. And as soon as I went home, I hopped straight on VR and I recorded the the actual song and I told Tagarbo to do it and that was a whole thing because he's British, so he kept saying, <laughs> uh, "N I C to the K into the Z instead of Z." Yeah. Like oh yeah. Like he kept yeah. doing it wrong. But after a while, we ended up getting the song. I made the music video in a couple days and maybe one or two. And then we, yeah, we released it and people really liked it. So I was like, oh, well, might as well keep doing music. Yeah, man. And I got to say, you do drop some hard songs, not going to lie. I, I be listening yeah, to those you. and those uh, those go pretty hard, not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about your new album you just dropped, The King. Yes. Um, the King, go listen. W. Yeah, I'm gonna put it up on screen right now, and it's gonna be in the description. Go check it out. That's actually it's actually pretty file. Not gonna lie. Um, but yes, sir. W- what made you make the king? The album. I don't know. I was uh, I was once again on vacation. I don't know. I go. <laughs> I have this vacation home in Italy, and whenever I'm there, I just think of like. Uh, I get a lot of creative ideas, and so I made all of this. I made songs uh, hmm. two to uh, uh, two to eleven uh, in two days, and then on the third day I made song one and twelve. Oh, and, so you yeah, like I made no the... life that? <laughs> yeah, that was the only thing I was doing. I was like <laughs> not editing videos. I wasn't playing video games. Just the whole day was just put yeah. the beat in the software, freestyle rap over it, uh, produce the vocals, put it down. Put mm. that away. Pull up the next beat, and then just kept going. On that grind, man. Three days. Got on that grind set. Well, I think it was just, yeah, I think it was just because I had like a rhythm that was just like, it was like a pattern I was doing the whole time. Like you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this, and made it very quickly. And yeah, mm. but it's not like rushed or anything. It wasn't. A, I I took my time for yeah, it. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't need any more times. I wasn't like, okay, I gotta get this done quickly. It was just no. I, I do the song and then I do the next one and it just turned out to be three days. Yeah, so, I remember yeah. the whenever you first dropped the album, The King. Um, there was so much hype going around that, and I think the hype was yeah. well deserved because man, the album is good, and most of the songs on there right. uh, that I I actually would probably put on my playlist. Not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, there was a uh, twenty people in the live uh live stream so the premiere mm-hmm. and i think it's currently at 200 something views which is less than i get on my average videos but it's music and my music usually 
doesn't get like a lot of views immediately, but it yeah. always keeps on getting views. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, a video gets maybe 300 views in the first week or two, and then it stops. It doesn't really get any more views. But my music slowly keeps on building views. And uh, so far, the receptions have been good. Uh, they've been very mixed, though. Half of the people say that the first and the last song are good, and the rest is uh, bad. Mm -hmm. And the other half says that the first and the last song are bad, and the rest is good. So I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. There's some beef between opinions, <laughs> apparently. But yeah, I'm happy with how it turned out. I actually have uh, it on CD myself. Mm. And I gave it to my mom. Oh, that's it. So that's, <laughs> that's cool, my mom man. likes the album, so I'm, I'm, hey, I, I made it kind of, you know. Nah, but yeah, the hype was definitely real. People in live chat were just trolling a lot, but you know, I was on call with Sharkify and we, yeah. were, we, we held an event for. Oh, we held an event for it, and yeah, so far the reception has been pretty good. Yeah, I, I believe I was in that for like a split second just to hear it, like on. Yeah, the... you were there for a couple minutes. But the reason why I left was so I could watch it actually on YouTube because the quality was way better than it was on Discord. So I just went over yeah, to yeah, the definitely. um, I just went over to YouTube and watched it, and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So you, I believe what you wanted to do beforehand was uh, add more hype towards the um album so you dropped the song fully fitted and i believe ev yes. a bunch of people like that song yeah the 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 single has more views than the whole album so far uh because it's been out for a bit longer but yeah. um the reason i did that is because if you look at big rappers and big artists and they always drop a song off an album and then do the album it was a week before and i realized like oh no one really is paying attention to the album because other people are doing other things and Sonic's working on his things and mm. other things are happening. You know, I gotta, I gotta put my business out there. I gotta let people know that this is coming and that I wanted to give people an idea of what they could expect. So I was like, okay, fully fitted, uh, which is my uh, group for those who don't know, it's a group of mm. YouTubers I uh, work with fully fitted. So I was like, okay, let me put this song out there. It's a good introduction to the album. It's one of the better songs. I put it out there. I got like 300 views. People really uh, liked it, and people were like, "Okay, I can't wait to hear more of this." So it definitely worked because the song "Fully Fitted" helped people get uh, excited taste, for the album. Like so, a yeah. taste of I just did that. Yeah, I wanted to give them like a little taste. Like I said in that, I think I said in the song itself, I put an intro on it. I said like, "Here's a little taste of what's to come." So yeah. that was kind of what that was for. That was yeah. to hype, help hype up the album, definitely. Yeah, and and I gotta say it did because um, I believe. Everybody that, like, all the YouTubers that you're friends with probably went to it because I remember, like, chat being yeah. going insane for some reason. Chat was just going insane yeah. down there, so. Chat was going crazy. <laughs> well, uh, most of my friends, like, Sonic, uh, JK, Axe, uh, Carl, they were in, uh, they had their own call because they were actually listening and a bunch of people yeah. in Sharkify's event were just, like, talking over it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really care because I wanted to hear their reactions anyway. I already heard the music. So <laughs> yeah, I was just there it. to get people's reactions. <laughs> yeah, I made it. So, you know, I was just there to get people's reactions. And yeah, so far it seemed good. But I remember Sonic called me afterwards congratulating me on the album and talking about, you know, mm. oh, you know, it's not really my style of music. But for the style, that, you know, it's pretty good and you did well and the quality is good. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, Sonic's on the album himself as well. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, I'm gonna pull up a video real quick. Um, oh. and I on my phone real quick. I'm just trying to see something, but um, right. Uh, I believe it was one of your songs. It's um, it's including you, X, Sonic the Man, and one other dude. I forgot the name of Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. And I put believe, them hands up. Yeah, put them hands up. What made you create yes. that song? Because that song, I actually well, think is fire. Oh my god, yes. That's probably one of my best songs I made because I put so much effort in that. Um, I made on, uh, on top, and for a while I've been liking the idea of just, I like the idea of like features and having other people on your song. So I was like, okay, who are some other Rectubers that make music? Uh, Sonic does music. Uh, Axe had a, a song called Neo, which don't listen to it because he doesn't <laughs> like it anymore. Uh, he has better music. Uh, at least on my album, he did way better than uh, I've ever heard from Axe. And also, yeah. I'm Put the Hands Up, he did well. 
and on my diss track he did well um so yeah put them hands up was just like i want to make a second song because i put out uh on top and i'd made the how to roast um mixtape yeah which is the, like i said it's a mixtape so it's not really like an official music video yeah so i put out that and i was like you know what people liked on top people liked how to roast i'm just gonna throw out i'm just gonna start working on my next song it was originally gonna be called cold times oh and it was gonna be uh it, it had a like lo-fi beat and it was uh it was also gonna feature a uh, gamer boy uh gamer boy 2914 mm. but i ended up picking an different beat and i didn't have enough like space on the beat to put gamer boy on there mm. so we ended up scrapping gamer boy but i did give him a i did let him be in the video um yeah and yeah i made put them hands up which was more of a like city vibe more of like a was a real switch in the direction that i was gonna go on music because on top was very modern rap and yeah. then put them hands up is really like 2000s you know yeah because type I, rap in, in my personal opinion uh the type of songs i listen to is um that like older rap and older pop and all that stuff yeah. hip-hop like 2000 hip-hop is the best type of music for me 2000 yeah. rap all that yeah. stuff yeah i really like rap like uh 80s uh up until 2010 is usually what i listen to myself uh any anything in between that i like but personally my fa favorite is 2000s you know like 50 cent g unit lloyd banks young buck tony yayo eminem uh things like that that's what i like so i started you know really that's what i was listening to myself so i was like okay i'm gonna make a beat like that i'm gonna produce my records like that because you know if you go to my i made a video on as well if you go to my songs you can hear that i have the the multiple layers of my voice yeah there's like stereo coming like on certain words it goes like and that's what they did a lot back in the days and they don't do that anymore so that's also part of that mm. style so put them hands up is really just a switch up in style and really like this is where i'm going to be going with my music and a lot of people like it and a lot of people don't uh, i still hear to this day from some people that on top is still my best song which is completely mm. fine uh i can definitely see that if you know modern rap is more your thing yeah then on top is definitely my better song but if you know you like the style that i'm doing then i guess my modern stuff is good but yeah put them hands up really was something that i wanted to do to kind of let you people know like okay guys i'm gonna be doing you know i've really become better at music and this is the style that i'm gonna be doing from now on yeah uh more so uh say this hypothetical scenario comes up say somebody does a diss track on you what is your first action that you want to do <laughs> that one did uh huh? no huh <clears throat> i'm sorry I saw the picture in Sharkify server. You don't gotta hide anything. That's fine. Nah, nah, yeah. nothing happened, man. Nothing happened. Let's just let's just let's just say um let's just say this hypothetical um this hypothetical scenario right. happened. What what uh, what would right. you do? <laughs> what would I respond? Uh, uh, first of all, let's let's talk about these two different scenarios. One where it's like not personal, and one where it's personal. Well, how to roast and everything's thingy, or was a no? Like, uh, say mean? someone did a diss track on you, and they weren't doing it for fun. They were oh, doing I'd... it to like. Okay, so yeah. one of them is I have actual beef with them, and the other one is just for fun. Yeah. Well, if I had actual beef with the person and I had issues with them, I'd probably make a song back because you know I'm probably better. Yeah. So I might as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's not a very, but you know, I'd probably make a. Make a song back because you know it's kind of part of the rap thing and the sport, I guess. But yeah, yeah, because if he's got if I have beef with someone and he's got something to say against me, then I'm not just gonna I don't back down like that, you know. I'm gonna you know keep going until he stops. But if I don't have beef with anyone, I probably won't respond. I had that with uh Jamal on VR. Jamal on VR called me once and he said, like, Oh, Nix, uh, I'm gonna make a diss track on you for fun. And then would you make a diss track back? And I, I told him like, no, cause I don't have beef with you. You know, the thing with everything rec room, for example, was I yeah. had beef with him. Uh, so that's why I made a diss track, but I'm not like, I feel like if going back and forth, the, the, it doesn't really have a point if I don't have beef with this. I feel like it would kind of yeah. waste my time. Yeah. So I'm saying. And if mainly, I have beef with someone, I'd definitely respond to them. Yeah. And mainly it's mainly just, if they're for fun, it's in the name, it's for fun. They yeah, it doesn't really matter. Like, 
it, it doesn't yeah. mean anything personal. It's just it's for fun. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's just say. Um, well, sorry. Now let's just say. Uh, I want your opinion on something. What is your favorite right. Rec Room quest? I don't play quests. Uh, uh, I've maybe have you... played every quest less than ten times, but I'd say Isle. Isle. But I don't play. I don't play any of them. Yeah, I just like I like. Isle is like one where I just like when I play Isle, I just like the way it looks. Yeah, I love the map. For me, like, like once you get past the graphics. um melee weapons and you get to the like firing weapons, that's whenever I really like it. Yeah. Yeah, I love the outside part of uh, Io. You know that part where you're like in that little village. Yeah, and it, it, yeah, that's it the be, part I like the most. It can be real fun when we have a group of three together because yeah, because Io is just fun. It's not difficult, but it's like yeah, challenging enough where you can, you know, have fun with it. Yeah, in your opinion, what is so, the hardest quest to beat? I'd say Crescendo, just because it's very. It takes a while. I remember the first time I did Crescendo, I. Uh, I spent like 30, I've I've played Crescendo twice, the first time I did it by myself, I was like 40 minutes in, because you know, it was the first time doing it, so it took a while, because I didn't know what to do, Hmm. and then I was like, almost at the end, and then a bat spawned outside the map, and I couldn't kill him, so I I rage quit, and then I didn't play it for like, (laughs) a couple months, and then I remember Oreo invited me, because he was streaming, Oreo Uh, B.I.? Yeah, yeah, I made a video on that as well. It's on my channel. Uh, he was streaming and he was just like inviting, you know, some of his friends. So I joined, and then me and Oreo we beat Crescendo together, and that's the only time I've ever beat Crescendo. <laughs> and uh, since then, I've just been like, nope, I'm not touching Crescendo. Yeah, man. I don't like Crescendo. It's just too too long for me. So, so I'm guessing you're friends with Oreo, correct? What, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened to him? He's like dead now for some reason. He barely uploads. Right. He's. I mean. I and like if it's anything know, personal, like, you don't have to say I'm here. But. I mean, I don't know what happened because I don't. I don't ask him that. But you know, I I see him every once in a while. It happens to a lot of rectubers, like, uh, you know, from that, that from that um group as well. Like they just don't uh, like slat uploads less as well now. Yeah. Um. I, I just know that Oreo, he does come on every once in a while, but Oreo's never been online that much. He just kind of, mm. I think he's just kind of getting tired of it. And I think that's the point that a lot of Rectubers are getting to, including me, because, you know, I took a break. And uh, yeah. Sharkify and Axe, uh, a lot of Rectubers are just kind of getting tired of it because there's no, it's been like very like, you know, in the beginning it used to be like this, like new idea, new idea, new idea. And now it's just yeah. like, it's mean it's just one like it's very stale it's very boring yeah there's not a lot of new new there's not a lot of passion there's not a lot of new stuff there's not a lot of video ideas are a big problem everything's already been done uh the editing is becoming more of a chore than a fun experience um you know people are just like i don't want to do it anymore i think a lot of rectubers enjoy the benefit of making a video they enjoy you know um getting recognized in public and yeah. being able to do certain events and things like that. But I think, you know, they just don't like think it's worth it anymore. And I think that's why people like Oreo as well and Mr. Squinkles back in the day. And nowadays me, Ak, Sharkify kind of took a break and yeah. are uploading less and less. Hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. The main reason why I think uh, content's being stale is because there's not really any good games out that people are creating and there's not really any good ideas that can be put out knowing games and um and most games are actually good and like have a bunch of ideas that you can put into it are usually either like stale or they're like sorry not stale but really right. old or they just don't get recognized well i think another thing is that not just it's not about rec room games per se but it's also just gaming in general yeah. if you go to harry manlek's channel and you look at Harry's most popular video. His two most popular are Among Us in VR and Talking Ben in VR, right? Yeah. Uh, 
both Talking Ben and Among Us were like hypes, right? Hype games, just like Fortnite was, and just like uh, yeah. Minecraft was during quarantine and Warzone for a hot minute and yeah. Overwatch back in the day. It, it's been like, you know, there's been no hype games in I want to say the last two years. Yeah. Ever since quarantine, like, there hasn't really been a hype game since Among Us, and yeah. uh, you know that also uh, affects Rec Room because. You know, uh, like I said, Harry's most viewed videos are other games in Rec Room. Yeah. And that's what, in the early days, a lot of Rec Room was. was Oh, we're going to play Murder Mystery, which is, you know, a yeah. concept from other games. We're going to play Among Us. We're going to play, uh, you know, all these different... FNAF was a big thing in Rec Room back in oh, the day. Yeah. Uh, and now, like, I feel like all ideas have kind of been done. And because of... Um, Rec Room Studio now, it's become more of a competition of quality, yeah. as in how like polished and good looking a map can be, rather than a fun yeah. concept with fun gameplay. You know, people are focusing way more on realistic guns than guns that are fun to use. You yeah. know what I mean? I think it's more people are more so really doing it professionally now with tokens prizes and awards yeah. and stuff then they're doing it for the fun of it and not and we're not even talking about like the what i've been getting into the deep meaning of like the quality is just going up but the gameplay like repeat and like fun meter is just going down and whenever yeah we... that's what i'm saying because people are focusing more on the quality and not on the the fun the, the yeah. gameplay um, yeah, that's one of the main reasons why I think Rec Room is getting stale. And I, I would love to see, like, a boost of Rec Room content that was both high quality, like, good, at least good quality, and have a fun gameplay. Instead of being either, it's really fun, but it's really bad quality and you can barely play it. Or it's really high quality, but it's not fun at all. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think if, like, some creators could just collab, it would really work, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, if, if Glitch Honor, you know, who made Island Warfare and Desert Storm War yeah. and a bunch of... Some of the most popular PvP maps worked together with uh, Taco, who made, you know, some of the most beautiful-looking Hangout maps. Yeah. You know, I think that would really, you know, that could make a cool combo, because then you have Glitch, who would make... A really good looking map and also a fun mechanic that's how i made rectopia with the idea of um both a map that's visually pleasing mm -hmm. with a fun soundtrack and like a good map yeah but also you know fun guns fun cars microphones uh you know just a good combination yeah. of like kind of the best of both and yeah more, more you know. content like uh if you haven't seen his like room you should definitely check it out it'll be in the description down below but um that yeah, your room that you made has a bunch of replay content that you can do you can like the fun yes. part is mainly like just being able to have fun like driving the cars hitting people with the cars how somehow managing to get the car up into the hotel room um <laughs> oh my god the <laughs> amount of people we didn't even think of that we just i remember it was it was like we released a game and then we went into one of the rooms and it was just people we just saw the cars up there and we we're like how did you do this and they just <laughs> and ever since then everyone's been doing it but yeah, yeah. Man. and then you have people being basically the radio on the microphone <laughs> and playing songs yeah. in the microphone no, but that's yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. I think a lot of the fun of Rectopia is also the people, you know. But a lot of PvP maps, it's, you know... Uh, I remember specifically, like I said, on Glitch Honors maps back in the day, on Island Wharf and there's a storm where you just have, two, like, bases and you would have teams fighting each other and it would just be like, you know, you would secretly betray your teammates because you were spying on them for a different team and you were, yeah. you know, like, actually trying to kill them and you would throw a grenade in a whole group of people and you would see everyone's reaction and everyone go, ah! You know, I just think the people really are what makes a Rec Room and the PvP maps. And, Fun. you know, sadly with Rectopia, it's been dead for a while now. Uh, it was really popular the first month. It got yeah. like 90k in the first month. And Math played it, Pow played it, I think uh, MX Therapy Slap played it. And after that, it kind of stopped. And yeah. we haven't gotten any more visits in. I've been thinking of making another map, but I gotta get. I gotta call Lemon because um, I don't know how to build. I'm just a man <laughs> that makes the ideas. I don't know how to build. 
Uh, Lemon builds. Lemon <laughs> did all the building on Rectopia. Yeah, so one thing I do plan on doing is creating my own little fun center that both is mm. good quality mm. and yeah. is also good for the actual viewers and people playing it because I don't want it to be really good quality, but nobody has fun playing it. I want to add, like, yeah. because I, I have a Discord called hashtag save and rec room. And basically what happens oh, is yeah? um, what we do is we pick out games that um, we have unofficial and official. So, like, if it's unofficial, then um, they haven't turned it in and they haven't, like, had, we haven't gone through the system yet, yet to, like, get them through the system. And we basically rank it on quality. How fun it is. Yeah, quality, replay oh, yeah. value, and I, I probably have to look this up real quick. Hold up. I believe it's quality, replay value, and something else. Um, huh. Uh, approved games. Uh, so it goes gameplay, quality, and replay value. And those put, like, the main steps to having a good time playing the game. Right now, we only ha on the right. official website, we only have two. Um, it's the, uh, Clash, Clashville PvP 2, and it has, like, a gameplay value of two stars. It goes by five, like, one to five stars. Uh, quality was one, nice. yeah, quality was one star, but the replay value was really high. Because it, you, you can have fun uh, playing the game. Yeah. And right. then, yeah. Wait, is that your server? Yeah, it's my server. So, yeah. If, can you invite me to that? I need, I need to be there. Yeah, I got you. Um, also, we have another yeah. thing called like Condo Chaos, which is on there. Condo Chaos is really good quality, but nobody plays it. So like the, ga well. the gameplay is like four. There's there's some bugs that need to be fixed in the game, but um, so far the gameplay is like perfect almost. The quality is really good. The like stylistic choices match. And, like, the replay value is really high because it, you, you can play it multiple times without getting bored if you have people with you. If you have no one, then it's kind of... Yeah, if you got your own party of people. Yeah. yeah. And it can be fun even without, like, your own group of people. It can be fun just as, um... Just, like, on oh, the public Brandon. because you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. No, but that's a great idea. That's an amazing idea to kind of make like a rating system for maps because then, you know, if I'm ever bored, I can go on your server and if I'm with friends, I can just go like, oh, this map is good. Let me give this a try. Let me give this a try. You know? Yeah. I, I think that's a great concept. You should definitely invite me to that server because I'm going to use that. Yeah. And mainly that's the reason I made it to like give people uh, experience. Like the newer people, the, you know, newer like record players that are joining. I want to give them yeah. the one of the best experiences that they got, like I had, because you know, when I started Rec Room, everything was really fun. But then after a while, oh, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, after a while, it um just went down to who can make the bell maps and who can make it really good quality. It wasn't about like trying to make it fun. There was no more collabs like back then because you remember like all the collabs that were happening back then on map making and that stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. And it just went down and spiraled down to who can make the better quality map. We don't care about if it's fun. We don't care about if it's anything like that. We just want it to be look pleasing to the eye, and that's it. Yeah. So yeah. We just want to win the contest. Yeah. And that's that's the main no, reason why I got that server up because I wanted to give new rec room players a chance to actually like have a good time in rec room yeah alright you got any questions you want me do you have any questions for me I don't have you... no I don't have any questions for you at the moment uh yeah um but basically yeah um so yeah uh, I hope y'all did enjoy this uh, episode of the podcast. Um, Sir. Uh, go check out his song, um, his whole album, um, The King. Not on Spotify, because Spotify hates me. Yeah. Uh, the King, all that, that album is pretty good. Um, fully Fitted, 
Um, all his songs are pretty good. I do say. Uh, I I really do suggest you check him out. Uh, he has a whole. Uh, um, if you don't want to do like uh, look up all the stuff on his main channel. He has a second channel called uh, Nix VR Songs, I believe. Nix VR Dash Music. Yeah, and um, that has only music that he made on there, I believe. And yeah. Uh, yes. So I do hope you enjoyed this episode, uh, and I'll see you later, and goodbye.